In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to analyze your data that you collected from the solub solubility lab with a potassium nitrate. And I'm also going to show you how to answer the questions in the rest of the lab. So let's get started. Some of you guys have a solubility curve that looks like this. Uh, you did not include the trend line. So use a ruler and go ahead and draw that trend line and try to interpolate where that line would go. Kind of a best fit straight line that goes through. Okay, uh, let's see. So uh, we have to do another thing too. Uh, we notice that the temperature is on the x-axis and then uh, a lot of us put amount of salt or something along those lines on the y-axis. I want to add something to this uh, the graph here. If you guys could type in on the y-axis, we're going to say salt grams per 100 milliliters of H2O. We just want to clarify what exactly that y-axis represented. Okay, so uh, I'll wait. If you need to push pause, then go ahead and do that. Uh, in fact, you can push pause all along the way if you need to uh, as you work. Okay, let's move forward. Oh, yeah, I wanted to add more things to the lab. So I want to add three dots. There's going to be one dot above the line. There's going to be another dot exactly on the line. And then another dot below the line. And I want to annotate each of these dots and what they represent. Okay, so uh, the dot right there, the one in the middle, if I had about, gosh, I'm looking here about, uh, what, 120 grams or so of, the, uh, of salt at 70 degrees Celsius, I am going to have a saturated solution. Let me say that again. If I put about 120 grams of the potassium nitrate in 100 milliliters of water at 70 degrees, I'm going to have a saturated solution. If I put, gosh, about, what is this, maybe about 50 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 milliliters of water at 70 degrees 70 degree Celsius, I'm going to have an unsaturated solution. So if an amount falls below that line, you'd have an unsaturated solution. If an area, if the dot appears above the line, then we're going to have a super saturated solution. So if I had, gosh, I'm kind of interpolating and guessing here, looks like maybe around 175 grams of potassium nitrate dissolved in 100 milliliters of water at 70 degrees Celsius, I would have a super saturated solution. So that's how we can use this graph here to figure out, uh, you know, how much of a solute would dissolve in a solvent at a particular temperature. All right, let's uh, figure out some more stuff here. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys skip question number three. So just get rid of it. Second and fourth period, just get rid of question number three. All right, uh, let's move forward. So um, I want to now work on how we can do questions six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, this is assuming that you've finished one through five already. Uh, if you've not done that already, go ahead and push pause on this video and work on those questions first. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this solubility curve. This is a solubility curve that is included in the uh, handout that you guys have, uh, the, the rest of the packet of this lab. It, the title is Solubility Curves for Selected Solutes, and I noticed that the x-axis is temperature and the y-axis is grams of solute per 100 milliliters of water. Okay, and so I'm looking at this. It's I see a bunch of different lines on there. Notice how the lines are uh, kind of there's arrows pointing to each of uh, these particular substances. So if I look at this, I can see right here that yellow line I just drew is the solubility curve for potassium nitrate, the same stuff that we used in the lab. Uh, let's see, this one is KClO3, and notice that some of the lines actually decrease, like this line for HCl. All right, so let's work on question number six. Question six says, how many grams of solute are required to saturate 100 grams of water in each of the following solutions? Let's do uh, 6A. So find KCl on your solubility curve. There it is. 
the question says, what's KCL at 80 degrees Celsius? So we want to find where 80 degrees Celsius is. And then we're going to like draw a line or look, use a uh, ruler if you need to, and look approximately where on the y-axis where it kind of ends up here. And if you note that at 80 degrees Celsius, in order to have a saturated solution of KCl, we would have to add, a, I would say, around maybe like 52 grams or so of the KCl into 100 milliliters of water. There you go. That's how you do number six. Try out the rest of them. If you need to push pause, do so now. Otherwise, we're going to do seven on the next slide. All right, so here is the next one. It says, number seven, what is each of the solutions below? Is it saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? So really, this question is going to say, does that amount fall above the line, on the line, or below the line? So let's take a look at 40 grams of NaCl at 50 degrees Celsius. I'm going to find the line for NaCl. I'm going to find where 40 grams, oops, give me a second here, where 40 grams ends up. And it appears like, so here's 40. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Just kidding. Okay, I'm finding 40 grams. This is so important. I'm glad that I made a mistake. I need to look at my... Uh, labels here of the axes. I was looking at this one down here, and that's not what I should be doing. I should be looking at, for this question, uh, the y-axis. So I'm going to find 40 grams. It looks like it's right where that red dot is, at 50 degrees Celsius, right about there. And you know what? That dot falls right on the line. And so my answer to this question, then, is going to be it is a saturated solution. If the dot falls above the line, I would have a supersaturated solution. If the dot falls below the line, I would have an unsaturated solution. Let's do question number eight. Question number eight says, how many grams of potassium nitrate per 100 milliliters of water would be crystallized from a saturated solution as the temperature drops from, let's do the first one, 80 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. Let's try it. So first thing I'm going to do is find KNO3. And here's the thing about this one is notice how at 80 degrees Celsius, it's actually kind of off the map. So we're going to have to kind of guess as to what that mass would be. Uh, and to me, let's see, it looks like it's about 170 grams or so at its highest, this area right up here. And at its lowest at 20 degrees, it's going to be about 35. And so what I'm going to do is subtract one, the highest, the highest number to uh, subtract the lowest number from it, and you get 135 grams. In fact, that's the answer. Around 135 grams is going to crystallize out of solution as the temperature drops from 80 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. It's kind of like what we did in that lab the other day as we took our test tubes of that potassium nitrate and dropped the temperature from a high temperature to a low. We had a certain amount of the salt come out of solution. And if it was question 8A, 135 grams would have come out. Okay, let's do uh, question 9. In fact, no, we're not going to do question 9. I want you guys to skip question 9. I'm going to be nice to you. Uh, but I feel like you guys can do question number 10. So question number 10 says, at what temperature are the following solutes equally soluble at 100 grams or 100 milliliters of water? So let's find NA, uh, NO3 and KNO3. Look, and this is the easiest one out of all. Of here's KNO3, and here is the line for NaNO3. And so what you want to do is you want to find where their two lines intersect. The question is asking at what temperature. So we want to find that temperature down here on the x-axis. The answer is going to be 70 degrees Celsius. If you have any questions, re-watch the video. Otherwise, I'll be back on Monday to go over it with you guys. Sorry if I confused you. And sorry for the long video. I'm having fun up here in Reno. Wish you guys were all here. I'll talk to you later.